We're in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and we're going to read verse 13. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? To carry away gold and silver, along with the cattle and other goods and things like that. I mean, that happened back in the Bible times, but not anymore. Uh, there is no such thing as uh, corrupt banking practices or uh, confiscation of goods or anything. <laughs> I uh, did a video a little while ago on the book The Great Taking by David Rogers Webb and I was unsure if he was a real guy or not. You know, there was different uh, information out there saying maybe it's an alias or whatever and some of you let me know that yes, he is real and that he's done interviews and things and I watched a little bit of the one interview with him so uh, he is a real guy. Um, so uh, he made some really good points in the book, some things I would not agree with but uh, overall, I think he made he made the case definitely for there being a great confiscation, a great spoiling of people in the future. Um, it's happened quite a bit, and uh, I think in America we've had I think three different times now where precious metals have been confiscated, um, and of course the one most people think of, excuse me here, is the cord wrapped around my feet. Um, the one most people think of would be in 1933, uh, fairly early on in the Federal Reserve's uh, big scam that they were pulling. Um, they were early 1900s, in the, what, 1918, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, put it in the comment section, when the Federal Reserve was incorporated. Um, and again, it's not federal and it doesn't have reserves, so it's all a big joke. And you can read the creature from Jekyll Island, you know, G. Edward Griffin and, and uh, all that stuff to see how the big money men scammed the American people and stole our wealth. But uh, they confiscated the gold back during the Great Depression years because it was making problems for the dollar and, you know, the whole thing. Again, I'm not going to get into that whole deal right now. But uh, the question comes... Are they going to confiscate gold this time around with this great taking? And I would say, you know, anything's possible with these people. Uh, when you serve the devil, you know, they'll stoop to anything. Uh, nothing's uh, out of the question for them. Uh, they don't really have much moral character. But um, I would simply say, if I was to hazard a guess, I would say what point would there be? In confiscating gold when so few people when so few people have it uh, that's a I remember hearing a interview with uh, Andy Schechtman he's a miles Franklin I think silver or well, precious metal dealer and he said of the people in America that have 50 million dollars or more um, in as their you know financial portfolio or something like that that something like two to three percent is allocated in precious metals. The rest is in stocks and bonds and whatever else. Uh, treasury bills probably and, and things. Um, so a lot of people do not have much in the way of precious metals. So to say that the government is going to somehow confiscate precious metals, eh, I don't know. Um, back in 1933, people were carrying around precious metals as their normal money. Um, I've said this story before. My grandfather uh, went to a Bible school and he paid off his co entire college tuition with a $20 gold piece back in those years before the confiscation of it back in 1933. So it was a normal thing. Most people had precious metals. Um, nobody thought anything of it. Now it's kind of a weird sort of, oh, I'm not a coin collector type of a thing. Um, well, um, People measure their wealth today in uh, debt. They think that liabilities are assets. Um, it's just insane. I, you know, I'm going to keep talking about this issue because it is a very major thing. And most preachers will not touch this subject. And that's very sad. There goes Luther, right there. Uh, 
But uh, people don't realize how big it's going to be, this whole thing. But if, again, getting back to my theory on this whole thing and what the Great Taking is about, um, it's not going to be the confiscation of precious metals, at least not right away. The confiscation will be property. Um, anything that you owe money on, be it houses, uh, land, uh, vehicles, whatever. I mean, there are people that literally are, are buying food with debt, credit cards, and, and they're... Uh, actually, I saw a thing where there was a Google search trend that was going around here recently. People were um, Googling, can I pay my mortgage payment with a credit card? Well, if you're crazy, you know, I mean, don't make your 8% interest rate um, payment go with a credit card that's, you know, 20 plus percent uh, interest rate. You know, that's, that's real smart. But see, people have run out of money because the American people have not learned to say no to covetousness. So, making sure my dog doesn't go out on the road here. There's a vehicle flying by. Good boy. So, um, people just rush on. I uh, was flying around, driving around, you know, not, not a care in the world, except for those debts that they can't pay. And so if I was to guess, um, I would say I think that what we're going to see is not necessarily the confiscation of precious metals because so few people have them. It really wouldn't do a whole lot for the Federal Reserve if they confiscated precious metals other than just monopolizing what metals are out there. Um, it'd be a much smarter thing to just simply say, we'll confiscate properties. And then we can uh, use those properties to pay back debts to foreign countries. And uh, Luther, come. Come on, boy. There he comes. Little speedy dog. But uh, that's what I think is coming. So a lot of people ask, you know, uh, should you be debt-free as a Christian? Um, yes. <laughs> Covetousness, which is idolatry, the Bible talks about, warns about that. Owe no man anything. The borrower is servant to the lender. I mean, show me anywhere in the New Testament where they're financing the building of church buildings with debt. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Uh, but people still fight me on that. But uh, I'd like to hear your opinions. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, right now, the uh, Moody's, the credit rating thing, has uh, downgraded America, the American economy or whatever, to uh, negative. And most of the bigger banks, I heard, now have been downgraded to negative. So the chance of seeing um, more bank failures before the end of the year is a definite possibility. I think December 12th, I think it is, 12th and 13th, is the next Fed meeting and they are going to have to choose to raise, lower, or pause on the interest rate thing. Uh, I mean, it's, financial stuff is just crazy to watch this stuff. I mean, it's insane. And it does affect us as Christians. You can't just say, well, you know what? I don't care about money. I've got the Lord and I've got His Word. Well, praise the Lord. That's good. But you know what? Um, money is there. You have to do something to earn a living. You have to pay bills while you're here on this earth. You can't just say, I'm not going to do any of that. Well, then you're going to have to find somebody that's willing to let you live on their property and you're going to have to live out there under a rock or something. Um, there's no sin in making money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Don't forget that. So, just some thoughts for me and I'd like to hear your thoughts on the issue. See you in the next video.